Today we're gonna to be talking about my education. Yeah, that's right, my education. We're gonna take it back all the way to when I was a little Jose and bring it all the way to now where I'm a, a big Jose. That's right, and I'm gonna talk, talk you guys all the way through my education. So, guys, get your coffee, get your liquor, both, whatever. I don't know when you're watching this, and uh, let's get ready for the show. No, Lambo, it's not a stupid episode, all right? I know there's people out there that probably are wondering and they want to know where I get all my knowledge from and all that stuff, right? Don't be such a hater, bro. Fuck, man. Jeez, everything's dumb to you, man. Fuck, what, what the hell, what school did you go to? Oh, 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 BKU. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, wait, Burger King University? Man. Anyways. All right, guys. Well, you guys already know. I'm, I'm beyond the genius. You know, I, I talk to horses. I'm, I mean, I'm beyond Dr. Doolittle out here, right? But anyways. <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, today we're going to be doing story time. We're going back to story time. Uh, it seemed that, like, the first few episodes of uh, the story time that I made for you guys uh, was actually pretty popular. You guys actually loved it. And so I'm deciding to continue making this story time. Now, um... You know, a little caveat when we when it comes to like story time, we're gonna be doing all kinds of different um, stories. You know, we're gonna be just again talking about things like today. We're just gonna talk about my education. Um, we're gonna talk about serious things. We're gonna talk about really funny stories. Again, I worked in the kitchen for a good majority of my lifetime, so I got a bunch of stories. But the reality is, is that like I forgot a bunch of shit. Um, and so, to me, I'm, I'm just trying to get my, uh, you know, uh, gears wet again. That's what she said. Um, in order for me to start telling stories on a regular basis. Because, you know, to me, you know, one of the awesome things about working in the kitchen all the time was the fact that I was, like, doing stand-up comedy half the time. You know, I was doing a lot of storytelling, doing a lot of that. A lot of the entertaining stuff. That's why I'm here now. I, it's, you know, kind of part of the whole thing. Um... But again, you know, to today we're going to be talking about the, my education and uh, how I came about being Jose the Great. I, nobody calls me that. In fact, I'm inflating my own ego, okay? In fact, if, if people that do know me know that, actually what I do know is that I don't know jack shit. You know what I mean? The more I know, the, the less I know, okay? And um, and that's the thing. I'm always learning. I'm always educating myself. But um, there's a lot of you guys that... Um, have asked me this or you know are curious about you know my education and so my education you know and I'm sorry I'm trying to be funny here and I keep taking it uh, a little mm, too far mm, mm, like always mm, that coffee is so good mm, 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 mm. yeah so all right guys so let's get into my story my education all right well when I was a kid literally when I was growing up I was uh, the little smart kid all right literally all the way you know, I was a little fat, chubby kid with the glasses, a smart kid. Um, and uh, as I was uh, growing up, um, I was um, accelerated pretty quickly through school and through, you know, the grades. And, you know, immediately when I was already like middle school, high school, they were putting me in like the special programs. No, not that special program. <laughs> you know, like the honors and AP and all that stuff. So, in fact, I think I was one of the first... Uh, you know, uh, generations uh, that was, you know, was uh, exposed to that stuff. I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, maybe not. But um, definitely, um, I was one of those kids. And uh, the thing is that, um, for whatever reason, I was just like one of those smart kids. And then on top of that, my dad, you know, was very instrumental in uh, my education. You know, not only was he an educator, um, you know, back when he was younger, uh, I, he also helped um, educate me further. Um, by, uh, again, com compl complementing the education that I already got. And so a lot of times as I would get education from school, he would tell me, hey, look, this is not really the truth. Okay, so, you know, you just learn it so you can pass the class. But here, let me show you what the real truth is. And so from a very, very young age, I was already questioning things and I was encouraged to question things all the time. Encouraged uh, to question my authority, to question uh, knowledge, to just always question. So as I was growing up and definitely as I got into high school, I realized, especially by the time I really, you know, I got into, you know, freshman, uh, sophomore year, right? So, freshman, junior year of high school, I was already like, man, all oh, this is a sham. This is crap. And I, and I didn't 
go to a particularly good high school and especially at that time it was in the late 90s i graduated in the year 2000 in the year 2000 in the year 2000 and so you know the education at least in my area my school was not that great it was uh very heavily populated school by immigrants, particularly Cuban immigrants, and uh, most of the school was run, um, you know, almost like a, like a, you know, like a, I don't want to say, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, like a camp, you know, type of thing, you know, where it was just um, a big um, babysitting type thing. So I was not getting any education at all in my high school. In fact, very minimal. And so because of that, my thirst for knowledge you know, was uh, even more so than usual because I wasn't getting that uh, knowledge or that education in my own school. And by the way, I'm, I'm sure nowadays there's all our, our the newer generations in the last 20 years have experienced a lot of this, and especially the kids in high school now and coming out of high school now definitely have been experiences. But again, I was experiencing this back in the late 90s, and I'm sure again some of you guys were as well. So basically, I got zero negative education from my school. Well, I don't want to say negative education. I actually got a lot of life education. Um, I a lot of people ask me, like, well, how was my high school life? Well. Honestly, my high school life was phenomenal. I loved it. It was great. People ask me, it's like, oh, what what part of the group were you in? What kind of clique were you in? Well, I'm, I'm you know, I was more like Ferris Bueller. It's funny because I asked, I told my girlfriend that, and she's like, who's Ferris Bueller? We gotta watch that. It's on our list. But anyways, <laughs> so yeah. Um, you know, so I was kind of like Ferris Bueller. You know, I was like the, the guy that, you know, was smart enough to um, in a sense, you know, run the school, not really run the school, but you know, um, let's just say that most teachers had some sort of business deal with me and I had business deals with pretty much everyone in that school. And that's when I, you know, again, I, I got educated on corruption. I got educated on the dark dealings of, uh, politics and a lot of things, you know, in fact, out of, you know, as I was getting nearing my late stages of high school, I, you know, uh, when you had to pick your career and stuff like that, my my actual personal choices, you know, and this was just led by, you know, my experiences through high school and uh, the few teachers slash mentors that I did have in high school that, you know, actually encouraged this because they saw that this is the ability that I had. Anyways, it was, my choices were lawyer or, um, and by the way, like a defender, like a criminal defense attorney, okay, like specifically. Um, that was the number one. Number two, politics, going into politics, all right? And um, and then things like, believe it or not, like stand-up comedy and things, and you know, uh, things of those natures. But the reason, the reason I never went into politics or law, even though I did start to study that in high school, in, in college, right after high school, um, I didn't take no break. I went straight, you know, into to that. And um, I wasn't that fortunate to have, you know, um, anyways, but so I went in straight into that and um, immediately I was already like, oh, wait a minute, this is not what I want to do. I, I don't want to be into politics. I, I don't have, um, I, I can't go into politics. You know what I mean? It will um, destroy my inner core as a human. And when I looked into lawyers um, and law, um, to me, it was more about defending the innocent. And I wanted to do that, but then when I noticed, uh, you know, how the lawyer stuff works, it's like if you really want to do, like, good work, then you're going to be starving most of your life. But if you really want to do, you know, the, the, the lawyer work that pays, you know, then again, you're going to have, you know, you're not going to be able to sleep at night. And so I was one of those kids. So, you know, eventually, um, after high school, by the way, so high school, let me just finish up high school real quick. So high school was a total joke. And then most of my education came from myself. You know, literally, you know, my father would teach me a lot. I was going through a lot of personal stuff, all right, with uh, my family. Um, you know, my dad was sick. You know, there's a lot of things like that. I had to be the man of the house at a very young age. So my actual teacher during the high school years was life. All right, and uh, I don't want to get too deep into that. You know, we can, you know, obviously we'll do another story time on that. Um, but the reality is, is that, you know, life, you know, was literally my teacher from a very young age, even way before high school. Again, literally from elementary school. So 
to me, um, but by the time that um, I, 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 you know, fin was finishing high school, was uh, I'm not finishing. Yeah, yeah, finishing high school and towards the end of high school, and I saw the corruption, I saw the horribleness, I saw that, you know, um, you know everything. I and by the way, I graduated in the top like 10% or 5% of my school, and I know it's not saying much, but still, and I had like. Um, uh, you know scholarships to go to school to go to college. I had to go to the University of Florida Gators by the way I'm all about the U baby University of Miami, but again, I didn't I didn't explore any of that Because I had to stay behind to take care of my family And so that's why I had to re relegate to you know being local and going to a local school And since I really didn't know what the fuck I wanted to do out of high school um, I, I mean I could have done a lot of things, you know, uh the reality is, is that I stayed local so I can figure it out, you know, so just go to like community, not community college, but just, yeah, community college, regular college, um, regular, you know, things like that in order to see, um, you know, what I wanted to do, which was a great thing because I got to do a lot of things as I was young. I got to explore a lot of things. Now, let me explain. From a very young age, how I got my education uh, when it came to the high school age, the high school years, um, the, during the earlier years, it was a lot of reading, a lot of books, and a lot of my dad, all right, literally. And again, a lot of reading. As I got older, the internet, this new thing called the internet came about, all right? No, sorry, guys, it's getting cold. It's, it's you know, uh, running nose out here. Sorry. As the 90s came about, the, this new thing called the internet came about. So I was I was one of the kids that was, I was already on the internet. I already had my computer before I even got to high school. I had that shit in the last few years of middle school. Can't remember when, somewhere around 14 years old, maybe 15, I already had my computer and I was already on the internet by the time I was in high school, that's for sure. And so I was one of the first, first kids, you know, online, one of the first kids burning CDs, bur you know, uh, downloading songs off of Napster, making CDs, making movies, you know, making, uh, you know, uh, just basic uh, coding. You know, I, I was into computers. I was a computer nerd. So to me, I mean, so computers was like, People knew that computers was going to be the future, but still, it was kind of still very early on. And so a lot of people were still thinking, man, is this even like a career choice? Is this like a thing? But, you know, and then and then it was still going, we were still going through like uh, where nerds weren't cool yet, you know, all that stuff. So, you know, to me, um, you, as I was going into out of high school I, I was really 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 into computers and all that stuff but i wasn't thinking to myself man could could, could this be like a viable career choice is this something i want to do i need something that's exciting etc cetera, etc cetera. you know going back to the high school thing again in high school i was part of like every click you know the popular kids like me the football team liked me, the uber nerds liked me. In fact, um, the, the uber, uber nerds liked me. We, I was, uh, we were part of the video game club. You know, we, the first, you know, iteration of anything even close to that. So again, I was with uber nerds, you know, on all levels, you know, I'm talking about like the valedictorians and stuff like that were my close friends. And you know, the guys that were, you know, bashing each other on the football field and, um, you know, getting cheerleading uh, accidents and, and all kinds of shit were also my best friends and everyone in between. I was again, like the Ferris Bueller of the, of the you know, of the school. The thing is that, you know, my business know-how, my charisma, and um, and as it, when I was very young, you know, I got a little bit of bullying, you know, when I was like, I guess, elementary school going into middle school, but that, you know, was over really quickly because of a few things. Number one, again, my charisma and my ability to talk and make people laugh, and, and then real soon I became a really big boy. So, sure, you know, I was a big boy with glasses, but I was also the biggest boy in the class. In fact, people thought I was skipped the grade but I wasn't you know what I mean I was really just a big kid um, you know I'm a big kid now but anyways <laughs> you know that whole fucking thing so yeah you, you literally um, I, I was in the position of being the bully but I wasn't that kind of guy so I just became more of a, like the popular kind of guy you know what I mean and I, I was friends with bullies and I was friends with everyone that whole thing I was that guy so you know, when it came to the computer stuff, that made me even more popular because I was friends with the nerd nerds, but I was I was cool enough to make that technology cool. And people would see me with my first MP3 player. This is way before the first, you know, iPhone or anything like that. You know, I, I had MP3 players back when people didn't even know what the fuck an MP3 was. And, and, and anyways, and I would just make things cool. You know, back then I was super left, okay, super left. All right, to the point of, uh, you know, I love George Carlin. 
you know, I, I would be one of those, this is way before Columbine and 9-11 and any of that, but, you know, me and my friends, you know, we were the ones that would, uh, you know, uh, dress up in, in black. And by the way, I loved heavy metal. I loved the gothic. I wasn't goth. I just loved the gothic girls. But I was heavy metal um, and all that stuff. Back in South Florida when heavy metal and rock was not a thing, it was all about either Hispanic music, but all urban black, you know, rap music, which I, I liked later on as I got in the kitchen. But regardless, you know, back in my early life, you know, I was a big metal head. I had a lot of anger, a lot of, you know, whatever. I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate. So to me, I was into that world. You know, that was the world that I was into. And, um, it was just really, really interesting, you know, the fact that, you know, just because I was a hardcore metalhead, you know, that and uh, a bunch of other things, you know, uh, was uh, literally what made me cool as a techie guy. You know, I was I, literally, I think I was one of the few guys that was actually pretty cool back in the day, you know, when people went girls and people were realizing, oh, wait a minute, this could be a cool thing and not necessarily like, all right. So again, this is before 2000. I graduated in the year 2000, all right? In the year 2000. In the year 2000. So, yeah, yeah, guys, you know what I mean? Like, that was just like my high school. So when I got out of high school, um, I was like, man, what am I going to do? I had I had the grades and I had like um, scholarships to go to the University of Florida to you know go into the medical field. All right, um, I had also or, or into law or, po or politics if that's what I chose to do. Um, I, so I had that, um, but I didn't really want to go into any of that. Um, I was already working in the restaurant industry in the last few years of high school. So to me, I was always in the restaurant industry from a very young age, and I was like, man, I love this, but I was always not encouraged to go the, the route of an artist. By the way, I, I loved film, I loved cameras, I loved all that shit when I say ever since like a young age in high school. This is why I'm doing this now. Um, I loved, you know, cooking and the restaurant business, you know, and stuff like that. But these are the things that I wanted to do, but I was always encouraged to not do these things. I was always like, man, you're too smart. You should be a lawyer. You should be an educator. You should be all these things. But I was like, fuck, I don't want to do any of these things at all. I want to have fun with my life. I want to enjoy my life. And so to me, you know, the whole thing of uh, going into the video and photography uh, industry was way discouraged because it was um, I, my family was part of that you know you know my cousins you know uh, my dad you know himself you know we were all we had that in, in the family so that was discouraged to go down that route it was too difficult you know you're gonna be a starving artist you know don't do it um, but then when I told my dad, hey, look, I want to be a chef, I want to be a this, and then that was the one thing that my dad actually did encourage. He's like, all right, fine, you know, you know, I don't blame you, you don't want to be a doctor, you don't want to be any of these things, I get it, I, I didn't either, you know, my dad did not want to do that either. He was just an educator in prison, he was a political prisoner in Cuba, okay? So, that's the, but that's what he, you know, he was doing that there, but, you know, at, at the end of the day, that's not, you know, what he liked, uh, stuff like me, he liked excitement, he liked physical labor, he liked all that shit, so, you know, all of a sudden, you know, he encouraged me to go down that route. He's like, look, if you're gonna go down that route, route at, at the least get your education, at least get some sort of, a, you know, back, you know, back basis, you know, to your, you know, to your knowledge, so that way, at least you're prepared for life. And I'm like, all right, great, no problem, you know, so, that's what I did, so, but before that, you know, I was already working in the industry. And as the years went on, you know, I was just making my way. And by the way, the cooking industry, the chef industry, the restaurant industry, you know, as, as the years were going on, you know, 18, 19, 20, 21, um, I was still working in the industry. So I didn't go into culinary school right off the bat, no. In fact, you know, in my mind, even though I knew even though I fucking knew that this was like the job, it was so much fun, and I love this, you know? I didn't really take it seriously myself as a career choice. I was like, I knew I was smart, and so I was like, well, fuck it, let me see what else I can do. So I started literally um, going down the rabbit hole of like, all right, let me figure out what I can do. So, uh, you know, that's, you know, in all the years after high school, you know, that's when I went to college. You know, first of all, I went to the university, then to college and back because again, I don't want, I don't want to be spending, you know, or, or accruing a lot of debt, you know, just to figure out, you know, that I didn't want to do X, Y, Z. So, you know, I was smart enough to at least realize that. So, you know, community college didn't cost me much and, you know, at, at least I could just, Ran, you know, rail through classes there and it didn't really matter. Um, so that's, back then still community college still cost nothing just about, in fact, I think I got paid to go to community college. That's how, you know, that was back then. Um, I'm pretty sure. All right. Um, so 
Uh, yeah, so I, I, I studied everything. I studied everything from humanities, you know, to political science, you know, to basics of law, you know, to, you know, just, but you know, all kinds of shit, you know what I mean? Computer science. I, I even took a little stint at DeVry University, um, try to do, um, um, what is it? Hardware, computer engineering, uh, software engineering, everything like that. And I was like, oh, wow. I suck at computers. I'm not. I love computers. I love technology. I can definitely understand this stuff great, way better than the average person. Again, hence why I talk about a lot of the stuff I do now, and um, why I have such a knowledge base because I've been around this space for such a young age. So I really get it. I just I suck at coding. I don't like it, and I suck at building stuff. You know, the hardware part. So. But I get it. I get the stuff. So, like, when it comes to not, so you know, that's why I never went down that route. You know, honestly, to tell you the truth. Um, and when it came to exploring all the other options out there, I didn't like anything. Everything just seemed more like you know pure hell. You know, to be a doctor or a lawyer. You know, working you know or working for a corporation or anything like that. So I was like, you know what? Fuck this. You know what I mean? Let me just be the best chef that I could be, or try to do that. So. I eventually, after the years went on, I eventually went to culinary school, graduated, everything was great, hunky-dory, and in, in the meantime, I was just building my career, and I kept doing that. And that, my education, and then, you know, now, you know, when it comes to education, you know, like, I, 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 all my life, I've been educating myself constantly. I'm always, again, from a young age, even high school, like I said, I was anti-authority, anti-everything. From a very young age, I, I didn't, I, I knew that the people giving me knowledge were full of shit and half of them, not half of them, 90% of them were wrong. And because again, because I could fact check, you know? And so again, I think a lot of kids nowadays feel this way as well. So, you know, to me, it was, uh, you know, I was always educating myself, you know, always, you know? So as, even as I was becoming a chef, I was constantly educating myself and then, and then educating myself more, you know, I still had the hobbies of computers, had the hobbies of uh, all this other stuff, you know what I mean, that I just, you know, loved, which is a lot of the stuff that I talk about now. And um, eventually, um, you know, I went to culinary school, graduated, that whole thing was great. But what happened was, is like, as I was going through the whole chef stuff, I realized that it was, okay, you guys remember the movie Office Space? I realized that working in the restaurant industry was not as free as I thought. I thought it was gonna be, you know, anti-corporate everything. And I realized that, no, it's not at all. In fact, you know, today's uh, restaurant industry is very corporate and run very, you know, the same way. So to me, after many, many years of that, that's when I got burnt out and soured by the business as a whole. And um, you know, even though I had my own businesses, a lot of them, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, the endeavors that I had did not materialize because, again, I don't know if you guys were aware of what happened 2007, 2008, and that whole deal. So I did not survive. I was in Florida at that time, South Florida. So you know, we got hit the hardest. So literally, I was not able to survive that, and then I just was in the industry and eventually I got soured and I got out of that. So when I got out of that, I, I was living in Seattle and I got into the marijuana industry. You know, I was helping people, you know, build their, their businesses. I was, I was just in that industry. When I got up there, it was legal and, um, I just transferred from one industry to the other. I, I started doing business consulting. I was in the, the weed industry. I was in doing a lot of really cool stuff behind the scenes and I loved life. It was really cool, but I, you know, I realized like I love smoking weed. I just don't love the business part of it. You know what I mean? It was more like, uh, I don't know. You know what I mean? It was just like, I didn't want to see how the sausage was made. I just want to enjoy it. You know, that's it. And so unlike the kitchen, you know, I love the intricacies and everything about you know, cooking, you know, so to me, I love cooking more than actually eating. I know it's weird, but that's basically it. You know, I love more of the act of the, the anyways, but back to the education stuff. So when I was in Seattle, you know, um, all of a sudden I transferred, you know, my life changed completely. And I moved from one industry that I was doing my whole life, which was, uh, you know, uh, the restaurant industry and cooking and uh, being a chef all the way into business consulting and now the weed industry and something completely different. But what I realized is that I had a lot of business knowledge that I acquired through all the years of me being a chef and uh, being, I mean, again, I was 
the, I was more of the chef that came in, you know, kind of like bar rescue, kind of like kitchen nightmares, you know. I got hired, you know, to come in and clean house and fucking, you know, rebuild that motherfucker. That's what I got hired for. I didn't get hired, you know, because I had like the prettiest, you know, menu or, you know, um, I can make like the nicest beautiful food or I had like an imagination to create this, uh, you know, awesome, no, no, no. I was a guy that once that guy failed, I came in to clean house and make sure that that thing was salvageable enough to make money so it didn't go under that was me I was a hatchet man I was a fucking paid mercenary that's what I did and so because of, and by the way I loved it you know but um, be, because of that I learned a lot and especially from the business aspect point of it you know uh, that's why I know so much about um, you know uh, marginal cost near marginal cost you know that's why you know I talk about that you know that aspect of our future uh, coupled with the technology coupled with all this stuff that I know I'm trying to you know educate you guys you know when it comes to that because it's like wow you know what I mean like uh, how all this stuff is truly integrated so but let's just stay on topic here. So when I was in Seattle, I did a lot of that and um, I got to put um, a few bucks in my pocket. You know, that's where I really got into Bitcoin and gold and silver. By the way, since then, I lost everything. It's another story for another day. Um, we'll talk about that another day, but we're just talking about my education here. So sorry about that battery died this time anyways but I'm, I'm already getting to the end of the story. So um, I forgot where I left off, but I know it was in Seattle and um, I was at a crosshairs in my life. I was in a, in, a, in a point in my life in which I knew I didn't want to go back to the kitchen. I knew that I did not want to go, you know, uh, I didn't want to continue uh, doing this for the rest of my life. I would do it as long as I could, but I didn't want to do it forever, you know, which is a consulting and being in the weed industry and doing all that stuff. So I was constantly trying new things trying to you know figure out what my next you know career could be what my next job what my next life move my next life move would be then one day fast forward <coughs> i was with my uh, I'm fat, sorry <coughs> Then, moving fast forward uh, to a few years down that path of me trying to figure out what I wanted to do, my best friend, Abe King, shout out to you, he said to me, hey, can you help me out? I got like this school project I need help with. Can you come with me so that we can, uh, you know, so you can help me film? Do you know how to work a camera and all this stuff? I'm like, yeah, I know how to work a camera, blah, 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 blah. And so I was like, yeah, let's go. So um, I just went out to help him and yeah, the minute that I had that camera back in my hands, for the first time in like, fuck, I wanna say 15 years or more. Um, I was like, wow, you know what I mean? This was fun, this is what I wanted to do. Um, that footage all of a sudden turned into something that I wanted to edit for him and then, you know, so he started teaching me and before I knew it, I was up late into the night, night after night, just editing crap and playing with this new toy. And I was like, oh, wait a minute, I think I found it. I think I found it. And that's it. And that's when I knew, you know, um, that this is what I wanted to do. You know, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I just knew that some something that had to do with the camera, with editing, with film, with this whole world. That's what I wanted to do. And so that's what I started to pursue. I started educating myself on how to edit. I started educating myself on a lot of things. I knew I had a lot of time. So I had that time in order to do what? Learn, educate myself. And that's what I did. Eventually come forward to September 25th 2015 I think I'm pretty sure or maybe October <clears throat> of 2015 that's when I uploaded my first video and it was talking about technology and talking about like a lot of stuff like that you know what I mean just talking about near zero marginal cost and all this and then um, I didn't get too much traction on that I lost you know um, the wind in my sails and then eventually I said you know what I love you know doing the cooking thing you know let me try doing a cooking vlog so I started doing that and I did that for a while again nobody watched these things so eventually it discouraged me but it did not discourage me totally from the whole thing in fact what it, what it actually did was get my juices going and so that's when I decided to just continue doing this. But I, I said, you know what, let me take the professional route. Let me try to be a professional video creator, producer, a photographer, and do all that stuff. And it went pretty well. It went pretty well. You know, at first I was just doing amateur hour, but eventually people were paying me. And so I was like, oh, hell yeah. And so I just kept doing that. I kept educating myself on that. I kept educating myself on literally a million other things. 
you know, um, all the stuff that I was already learning about the Federal Reserve, about gold, about Bitcoin, about technology, all the things that we were, you know, moving into. And so eventually it morphed into this. Then, you know, back in the middle of 2017, a lot of life events happened to me. We're going to leave that for another story on story time, but I lost everything. I lost everything. The only thing I had left was a shirt on my back, literally. Okay, and um, I went through, um, you know, I want to say a depression because imagine that something like that happening to you, you know, uh, um, for a few months, for a little bit of time. And then, you know, by the time that the end of the year rolled around in 2017, I found myself again because my best friend, again, the same, same Abe King that told me in 2015, hey, can you come with me and help me out with the, by the way, that's how I talk. Can you help me with the camera and uh, help me do stuff? That same motherfucker said, bro, what you need to do is that you need to get on YouTube and you need to start talking about all your ideas and all your this and have a vlog and blah, blah, blah. That'll help you feel better. That'll help you, you know, um, move on to the next thing. And he did that. And that's what I did. I went on, I went home and I got on my camera and did exactly what I'm doing here. Started doing my first video vlog ever and have not looked back ever since. The first time I did my vlog was in late, I mean middle or early December of 2017. And I have been literally non-stop vlogging since then. And it's going to be already two years of non-stop vlogging. And um, especially this year, 365 days, you know, literally every single day I've had an upload, literally. You know, um, and I, yeah, the live streams are some sort of, they're an upload, but every single day I get content and uh, I just keep, want to keep doing more and more of this. And, um, you know, now that's going to go into the next story time, which is how I became a YouTuber, but that's for another, another story for another day. But that's basically my education. My education has been me, myself, and I. I have been the, uh, the, the, the main guy following knowledge, you know, literally reading books, um, you know, questioning authority, questioning things, um, finding knowledge everywhere I can. And I still do that today and I'm still going to continue doing that. And that's what a lot of this vlog is all about. It's me sharing my knowledge with you guys and then sh you guys sharing your knowledge with me and all of us sharing knowledge together. And um, again, in turn, you know, creating this huge knowledge base, this knowledge uh, questioning thing. Um, I don't know what we're creating here, but, you know, in order to, you know, make the best for all of us. All right, construction is happening next door. I think it's time to go. It's been a very long episode, but guys, you already know the deal. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to please like, please subscribe, please share, please stay awesome, and uh, I love you guys, and I'll see you guys mañana. Hope you guys like this episode. Please let me know down below in the comments what you guys think, and uh, I'll see you guys later. Bye.
Sometimes we feel like we never have enough time. We're constantly running and rushing throughout the whole day. Just trying to get our basic necessities met. Whether it's going to work, going to school, chores, bills, driving. It really doesn't matter. We all have lives that we lead. And a lot of times when we hear others saying, Oh, do the work. Get this done. Just post something. They don't often realize how many people out there want to really realize their dreams. Achieve everything they've ever wanted and not work the slave jobs that they do. But the, they just don't have enough time. There just isn't enough time. By the time that somebody gets home at the end of their day, they're so tired because let alone everything that encompasses our day, it just never never ends. As, as we're working and our days are winding down, we are already thinking about what we're gonna do the next day. And it's not because we, we want to, it's because we have to. We have so many responsibilities these days that it's, it's almost impossible to neglect them. Because if you neglect anything, I mean, it, it, the whole thing is so fragile, it could just fall and you lose it all. And sometimes all, that, all we have is that minimum wage job to keep us afloat. And we keep scratching and pushing our head and pushing forward and hoping that one day something will happen. Something better will come. But the true, the true reality is, the fact is that it won't just come. You have to create it for yourself. You have to make it happen. And even though it might seem impossible, like you're already working way too many hours, you already have no time to sleep, breathe, eat, think. You still have to figure it out and make it happen. It is hard. If it wasn't hard, everybody would do it. You've already heard this a million times. But the thing is, what separates the winners from the losers are those that understand how hard it is, embrace it, and just take it, you know, just take it all the way down to the finish line. And they're waving the flag while everybody else is still on that race. So, if there's one thing you take from this little video, is just be patient, do the work, follow your dreams, follow your passion, and trust me, it'll, it'll, all, it'll all happen. You just, you can't give up and you really gotta work hard. That's all. Hey guys, me and Lambo are still here. Show's not over. Just wanted to give you guys a quick reminder to please check out the online store where you can find all kinds of awesome merch. Also, check out joseatiaga.com where you know it's the website for me and all this other stuff so also you know check out discord it's an online community in which everyone all my fans hang out again just you know look at the click at the link at the bottom description of every video here um, where you can just join the community and join and continue the conversation where we talk about you know all this and beyond so please don't forget to check us out there check me out on instagram check me out on twitter check me out everywhere in fact always look at the description of every video you can find all kinds of stuff at the bottom of the description of every video again i'm always giving you all kinds of goodness so you know whether you're checking the description of the video or whether you're watching the next video which you're going to see some here now you're going to have all kinds of fun so again thanks again for watching and i'll see you guys when you